The much anticipated Genesis GV70 is finally here. And this is the fifth vehicle to the lineup for the Genesis brand. We've seen the GV80 and it is a mid-luxury SUV and it has had great success. But the GV70 is something we've been waiting for because it has a sport lineup and that we're going to be testing today and you're gonna go along for the ride. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Lauren Fix. This is the 2022 Genesis GV70 Sport. And I've been very excited to drive this vehicle because it has the larger motor. This is an all wheel drive platform and competes in the luxury small SUV category. This is a very competitive category. So when you go into the dealer, they're gonna try and sell you on this vehicle. And yes, they are already on dealer lots. So you can go and test drive one right away with each of the two motors. We're gonna cover this vehicle in 10 different categories. Cause when you go on to the dealer lot, they're gonna try and sell you on the vehicle because that's their job. We're gonna give you information so you have car smarts. We're gonna cover 10 categories, performance, handling, safety, visibility, seating, technology, features. We'll go outside. We'll talk about design and quality cargo value of this vehicle compared to its big competitors and the list is down below in the description as well as links to those reviews so you can do all your homework in one place and in the end we will give you a car coach reports total so you can compare it against the other vehicles when you go into the dealer you'll have knowledge knowledge is power and don't forget to subscribe and click that little bell so you don't miss all the reviews we're covering as well as additional information so that you can save money let's get started with driving this vehicle i'm very excited we'll start off with under the hood. Under the hood is a standard 2.5 liter four cylinder engine with 300 horsepower and 311 pound feet of torque. Our optional sport model has the 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 with 375 horsepower and 391 pound feet of torque. Both engines are paired with an eight speed automatic transmission with paddle shift. Putting this vehicle in sport plus zero to 64.9 seconds. Nice, turbo kicks in, not a lot of lag, little bit of torque steer, and that just goes. This vehicle really wants to run. I find it a little bit weird how it wants to float the gauges. That's part of that drive-by wire. Fuel economy combined is 21 miles to the gallon with the twin turbo V6, which is the one I would want. Personally, I could own this car. This is a pretty neat piece. This is in the Sport Plus mode. This is a lot of fun to drive. There are other drive modes that don't kill the fuel economy. And when you drop down to the regular Sport mode, the gauges change in front of you and it still has a lot of zip. And I think this is a really nice design. Somehow my gut tells me that when they hired the person who was in charge of the BMW M line, that they put a little bit of their personality in this vehicle because this is the sport package. And I think they've succeeded at making this a lot more fun than just a boring SUV, which this is not. There is other drive modes, which would be the comfort mode, giving you a softer ride and making a few changes. Going down to the comfort mode as we drive around the city streets here, really nice ride. It's soft. We'll talk about that in handling. There's a lot of computers in this vehicle. And part of that is when you change the drive modes, you change the driving experience, which I like. You can go down to the eco mode and everything gets calmer. I like that. Very nice. If you just want to sit in traffic and, and take it easy and put on that sounds of nature, you'll be very happy and we'll cover that in technology. There is also a snow mode. So when it gets really icky out, especially up here in the northern end of the country, we have the ability to move around the traction in order to give you the best handling for the vehicle. And again, that's part of the drive modes, but it does also change the performance aspects of this vehicle. Really loving the performance of this V6. I was not sure how I was gonna feel about this vehicle when it showed up, but I'm falling in love with it. And for performance, it earns a nine. Standard is 19 inch wheels. We have the optional 21 inch wheels on the sport package. This is a prestige as well. I really impressed with the tight handling, even in the comfort mode, you can drop down to that comfort mode and you still have that really nice specific handling, which I do appreciate. This vehicle has a multi-link front and rear suspension. I think they've done a really nice job making this very specific. 
Our test vehicle has the optional electronic limited slip differential, which I do like. As far as making a three point turn, I think that's important as well as turning radius. You can almost get around a two lane road. Easy to drive, the brakes are great. I can prove that to you in just a second. Here we go, acceleration and nice. Overall, when it comes to handling, the brakes are solid and firm. The handling is nice and specific. I like the different drive modes. It's a lot of fun to drive. It is very spirited. It is very sporty. It is almost German in its personality, but for handling, this vehicle earns a nine. There is a standard suite of safety features for the Genesis lineup, which includes a smart cruise control, which can be adjusted based on driving style. You've got your driver convenience, which includes the highway drive assist, highway lane change, speed limiter on or off. I want it off, but you may want it on. Your warning, whether you want it late or standard. Your warning volume, your haptic warning. I want that off, but you may want it on. It vibrates the steering wheel, light, medium, or strong. I appreciate the adjustments. Driver attention warning, which includes the leading vehicle departure, which is really nice when you're sitting at a traffic light. The warning that includes keeping your eyes on the wheel and on the road. And I'll tell you what, there's two red lights. You can see that in technology that uh, stands out. Inattentive driving gives you a little coffee cup there to warn you. You've got your forward safety, which is active. So if you get too close to someone, it will intervene to save you lane safety, which is if you drift out of the lane, it'll push you back. Not a fan of that, but some people like it. That's why it's there. Blind spot detection. I think that's important. You drift over, maybe you don't see somebody there. It's good to have that to protect your car. Parking safety. I do think this is important. This is the surround view camera the park distance assist and the rear active assist. And then there you go, it goes around to a full circle and then back. When it comes to safety, since it's all standard and quite impressive because this is all included with the Genesis GV70, it earns a 10. When it comes to visibility, it's part of safety. 80% of your driving decisions are based on visibility and this great safety that's standard in this vehicle will help you, but you still need to see with your own eyes. So you've got a nice piece of glass out the front, which allows you to see the roadway. Along the side, the sill is a good height. It's a little bit high, but I can see the road down below. And I think that's important also for the second row. But what's really important is looking out the back and you can see those three headrests and they do block some of your vision, which is why you have an around view camera. When you put the vehicle in reverse, you do get a pretty clear backup camera as well as a nice around view camera that is adjustable. And I think they've done a really nice job with that. The only thing that you should be able to do is use your own eyes to see where you're going. When you put the car in reverse, the side mirrors tip down, which is a nice feature. You can shut that off if you don't like it. But the design of the vehicle, when you turn around and you look, you see that C pillar. It is quite huge. And that's between the second door and the trunk. It's part of the design, but it does limit some of your natural visibility. And for that, we gave it an eight. When it comes to seating, this is the most important seat in the house because this is where you sit when you drive this vehicle. In front of you, you have a really nice beefy steering wheel. It is really nicely designed with red stitching in our case. And in addition, you can get it heated. That's part of a different package. You can get three stage heated, three stage cooled in the front. And with the additional package, you can get heated rear seats. In the Sport Prestige package, you also get 16 way power seats for the driver, 12 way for the passenger, and for the driver only, not for the passenger, I'm sorry, you can get a massaging seat. Also, there is an adjustment for the seat to give you the proper posture. And that is something I've never seen before. You have to go through the settings, you press the buttons, and it'll automatically adjust so that the steering wheel and everything is set for you because this is power, tilt, and telescopic on the steering wheel. And this is good because sometimes people don't realize you need to be 12 inches from the center of that airbag to your chest. Some people are farther, closer, whatever it might be. So this allows the car itself to decide based on your height and weight, and you can enter all that information and no one needs to see that information but you. The Sport Prestige package also includes suede inserts in the seats. Let's take a look at the second row and see what we think about this five passenger vehicle. In the second row, our vehicle has all the options, which includes the Sport Prestige Pack, which includes heated rear seats, which I think is great. These are three stage heated rear seats, which I really like. There's also USB and a regular connection here for charging. There is a three zone climate control. So you have your own climate control back here and there's vents. And on the passenger seat, you have the ability to move that seat forward or back, which I really like. 
especially if you need the room. I can just see my kids torturing whoever's in the front seat when they were little. They're adults now, but that would be something I could see someone doing. But for adults, that's totally fine. In the back of the seats, you have two cup holders, and I like this better than the German ones because their cup holders are integrated into that center back piece, which is important. There is no pass-through, but these are 60-40 split seats, and we'll show you that in cargo. One of the options is this net, which is really nice to have. It's power on some of the other vehicles. In this case, it's manual, and it's good for kids. When you have babies in the back seat, they won't get the sun on them. But there's tons of knee room. I have the seat set for me. I'm 5'8". I'm all legs, just to give you a reference. And tons of headroom, just surprising a lot of room. A third person in the middle wouldn't be sitting too tightly, which you find in some of the other vehicles. Uh, in the doors, you've got another one of the Lexicon speakers. You've got your window lift and locks, storage, and then you have your lower base speakers down here, nets in front of you. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with the seating. When it comes to seating, I gave this vehicle a nine. When it comes to technology, you have this beautiful 14.5 inch HD screen, which I think is fabulous. And it has different settings. You can start off with the nothing setting if you prefer to have nothing there. Then you've got your maps. And that is a really nice crystal clear map that is full screen. If you don't want it full screen, you just press that and you can have the temperature or whatever else you want to adjust. Just press the buttons and you can change whatever information you want. And in this case, that's what it's showing. So we'll move that out of the way. So that is your navigation screen. Now you can go to the next screen, which is back here at the home screen, and you can do the navigation menu, your satellite radio, which is right here. Very nice split screen, which I think is nice. You can have everything you need right here. Going back, you also have your media. You can add in whatever media you want. It has the sounds of nature, which we've shown you on a pretty much every Hyundai and Genesis product, but it is kind of cool because the sounds are quite impressive. Calming seas, your lively forest, rainy day, open air cafe, your warm fireplace, and your snowy village. Everyone has a way to relax. I don't want to listen to the snow. I live in the snow, so I don't want to see it. There's HD radio data here. Your phone can be connected. You have Genesis connected services right here, and that allows you to have the weather, the calendar, vehicle diagnostics, maintenance, and so forth. There, and it also has your maintenance right in there, which will tell you how many days are left on your oil and what needs to be done and the intervals. Going for the day, you have a phone projection, your voice memo, which is nice, your setup, you can set this up any way you want. Again, this different devices, head-up display, which is in this vehicle, which I think is nice. Some people call it heads up, some people call it head up. So that's up to you to make that work for you. Active sound design, really nice because it tells you about the different changes. And then you've got your drive modes over here also in your safety features. Going further back, you've got your sounds of nature, your valet mode, and this is your seats which allows you to adjust them. I like how it's showing red, that's kind of cool. Cushion height, tilt, you can do that for the passenger seat and the driver's seat is here, so you can adjust that as well. We talked about that in seating. There's also a quiet mode that if you touch that button, it'll actually get dark, nice and quiet. Your climate control is down below, but it's also here and it shows you what you need. You can adjust the temperatures accordingly. And this is your notifications. You can adjust these as you need to based on what you're looking at. Going to the next screen, you have your manual, which is built in. Again, if you can figure out what city that is, I don't know what it is. It's not New York. It's a smaller city for sure, but I'm sure we can figure that out probably someplace in Korea. But overall, it's really nice technology. But in front of you, you can see those two red lights. Those are your eye trackers, so it can see if you're paying attention to the roadway. Our sport package has this amazing LED screen that is in front of you. It's 12.3 inches and this is three-dimensional. You can take the 3D off, but I kind of like it. It's nice. In addition, you can press this button on the steering wheel to the right. We'll talk about that in features and you can see you can go into the safety settings. That's your navigation and also your temperature, 
for your oil, your torque, and your turbo. You can put different information in, your drive information, and so forth. And all of that is right there in front of you, really nicely done. And I really am impressed with the technology in this car, including the smart posture care, the fingerprint recognition, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto, and there's also wireless charging. For technology, this vehicle is pretty cool and earns a 10. When it comes to features, we have this very cool leather wrap steering wheel, which I think they did a really nice job. And the Genesis logo is right here. And note that this is a three-spoke steering wheel, where the GV80 is a two-spoke with an ellipse. This is much improved. Now you've got your different modes over here, and this is for your audio, and you can put your favorites there, and your audio setting is there in this nice little knurled knob. On the right side of the steering wheel, you have the changing of that screen we talked about in technology in front of you. You just press that button to get to the setting you want, and then you can also dial on this knurled steering wheel to get the different settings. You can see that over the top there. And then on this side, you have the ability to adjust the different settings that you want. Safety systems here. You've got your paddle shifter on your right as well as your turn signal on that nice little knurled knob. I like how they made it very jewelry-like. Right side of the steering wheel, you've got the upshift as well as your wiper blades. In front of you, you have this very cool 3D screen. We covered that in technology. Over to the right side of the steering wheel, you've got your auto off, your brightness, your hill descent, and your traction control. Further down, the buttons to open up the hatch and your parking brake. You also note that there are aluminum pedals on this vehicle, which I think look pretty athletic. On the door, you have the Lexicon audio system as well as memory seats for two people. And you can do that posture adjustment by pressing the set button and following the directions in the manual. On the door, you've got your mirrors and your window lifts and your locks. I do like this carbon fiber trim. It is part of an option package, but I think it makes it look really cool and classy. Over to the center, we have that beautiful 14 inch LED screen. Love the linear design of the vents. And there's your passenger door. Very nice. Back over to your center console, you've got all of your controls, which include heated and air-cooled seats. And that is three stage as well as your climate control. And then you have your buttons as well here, map, navigation, favorites, emergency, your radio, your media, and your setup button. Further back, you've got your drive modes. And as you press those, we covered that in handling. You can see the different drive modes. Your camera, when you press the parking camera, it gives you that around view bird's eye camera and the backup camera, which is pretty crystal clear. You can also press that button, which we'll talk about in visibility. And it's very cool how a computer generates what's around you. Further back, you've got your volume and your tuning on these knurled knobs. In the back, the home, and the menu, instead of pressing the buttons that are in front of you. This allows you to dial in what you want on the screen in front of you. And you can see that this is really nice piece of crystal. They did a nice job making it look like it's crystal, at least if it's not. It looks real. It looks good. It's very much like a watch knob. Again, more carbon fiber on the interior of the center console, which I think looks great. Going further back, you've got your dial, which is really nice and clean for park, reverse, neutral drive. You just put your foot on the brake. That's the auto hold so that your vehicle doesn't roll at a traffic light. On the right side, you've got your wireless charging in here. Your charge ports are here, and that tells you about the wireless charging. Your remote control has the auto start as well as that smart park, which allows the vehicle to move in and out as needed, and hatch, horn, and lights. Really nice, very nice, nice and clean. Genesis logo. Two cup holders, which are good sized. Inside this glove box is another charging port and more storage. I love the red stitching on these seats with the suede inserts, nice bolstering very nicely done. In the back seat, you can see those red seat belts, red stitching, and more accessories and features. The console above your head covers not just lighting, but also the ability to push back this gigantic glass roof, which I think is really nicely done. And yes, it opens because not all of those vehicles in this category do that. 
Lots of great features on this car, including head-up display. This vehicle was very well thought out, and for features, it earns a nine. The G in the GV70 stands for Genesis, and the V stands for versatility because this is an SUV. You will notice this athletic stance, and that's what this vehicle was designed for, where the GV80 was more about luxury. This is not a duplicate of that vehicle shrunk down. This vehicle has its own personality, and it's quite muscular and athletic. You'll start off with the Genesis logo on the hood. I love this hood. It is very sporty and very sports car-like. Going into these headlights, which are the dual stripes, which are very distinctive of the Genesis lineup, this is something that they're adding on to all of their product line. You're seeing it in the 70, the 80, and the 90. The grille in front matches the rest of the family, and in this case, it is a black chrome, very cool, very muscular. And further down, they have a matte black so it doesn't pick up all the dirt and the obvious appearance, but then it gets shiny again down below. They did a nice job of changing the colors and the textures because they want this to have a statement of its own, and you can definitely see that driving down the road. Standard is 19-inch wheels. Our sport package offers 21-inch Michelin, these are really nice touring tires. They're not summer tires, but this is not a track car, but it does do a good job of transferring the performance engine through these tires, sticking it to the ground, and that's why you see this vehicle handle so well and perform as it does. Going further back, instead of having chrome, you have a muted chrome trim all the way around the windows and black upper roof rails, which I think they did a really nice job. Very clean lines all the way back. You will note that the doors are nicely balanced front to rear. Sometimes I see smaller doors in the rear, although these are a little tight to get into. They've really done a nice job in the design. One design element that is very distinctive of the GV70 is how this chrome piece dips down here and makes a very cool sporty look. Gives it a different effect than the GV80, which continues up on a higher line. Also, you'll notice that the whole back slopes down like a sport back making this look like a much more sportier vehicle, which I do appreciate. Coming around to the back, I love this high wing. It gives it a much more aggressive, sporty look. I am surprised that this wiper blade is not tucked up underneath. There is tons of room for that, and that would make this a much cleaner look. This very much has the rear end look of maybe an Alfa Romeo Stelvio. The dual striped taillights are really cool. They're nice and clean and integrated, which I do appreciate. Genesis logo here, GV70 on this side. And this says all wheel drive with the 3.5 liter turbo, my favorite engine of the two. Further down, these big gigantic sewer pipes on this vehicle is pretty cool. You'll see that this is plastic, it is matte, but the idea is to kind of complete this look so it's not just two tailpipes hanging. They did a great job making this look sporty with the rear valence. I think they did a wonderful job, and when it comes to design, this vehicle earns a 10. When you're looking at the quality of the Genesis, you know it's under the Hyundai brand name. And what that means is they produce their own metal at their own plant, so there is great quality control. There's a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty on this vehicle for the powertrain and a 5-year, 60,000-mile new vehicle warranty on this. There is no maintenance package included. The dealer might offer that. You might want to check because Genesis has done a great job of trying to integrate premium luxury to consumers at a very fair price. The materials on the inside are fabulous. I love the suede materials, the real stitching, real materials, unlike pictures of material which you see in some of the competitors in this category. The build quality of this vehicle was quite impressive. We weren't sure what to expect until we actually got our hands on it. And I have to say, quite impressive Genesis. Not that I expected anything less. And for quality, it earns a 10. Coming around to the back, we have 28.9 cubic feet of storage, which is quite a bit for this category because not all the vehicles have this much space. The seats fold down 60-40. Underneath this cover, you have additional storage as well as the owner's manual. Lift this cover up further back, and there is the jack. The spare tire is underneath. There's also additional place to hide things, which I think is really nice. To put down the seats, you just pull the lever and they fold right down. Really easy to use. Of course, you have to manually put them back up. There's also a 12 volt outlet in the back. When you're looking at the value of this vehicle, the 2.5 liter twin turbo four cylinder engine starts at $41,000. This is the 3.5 liter turbo and it starts at $51,000. When you add on all the goodies, it does increase the price. We had $5,000 for the sport package and then the tech package, another 4,900. 
which brought this vehicle into the $60,000 range. So are all the competitors. They're listed down below and links to those reviews. So when you start looking at this price point, what you're getting for your money, what safety is included, the performance, the handling and everything, the value proposition for this vehicle is really good and deserves a nine. Now there are a lot of pros to this car. Lots of performance on this trim level. Of course, you can get the lower trim level, which we'll do in a separate review with the smaller engine, although pretty much through the same vehicle. The handling was excellent. The comfort of the seats was really good and the technology was top of the line, especially compared to the competitors for the price. On the negative side, there really wasn't that much, although I wish there was a massaging seat for the passenger and not just for the driver. And the seats are a little bit on the firm side in the second row as well as in the passenger seat. But overall, the seating is more to my liking and it may not be to yours, that's important. Also note that the second doors getting to the back row can be a little bit tight. So if you're really tall, you might wanna check out the back seat before you purchase this vehicle. But there are very few negatives to this vehicle and you almost have to start nitpicking to look for it. You've got great warranty, these vehicles look good, they go well, and they're all wheel drive. When you're looking at this vehicle compared to its competitors in all 10 categories, this vehicle totaled up to be a 93, which is an excellent score. And there's a few little things aren't enough to turn you away from driving this. You should absolutely take this for a test drive before you make a decision. We did not cover every single little detail because if we did, we'd be here for like two hours. So if you have additional questions about any of the categories or anything I didn't cover or stuff I did cover, put it in the comments below. I am more than happy to get you an answer. A lot of times it's hard to get it from the dealer, but I will get it for you so that you can make your final decisions. Also check with your insurance agent before you make a final decision because one might be more expensive than another because it has to do with replacement value. There's residual value and all kinds of other little factors that are involved. If you got value from this video, make sure to like, share, and don't forget to subscribe. And if you haven't had a chance to check out our podcast, Total Car Score, it's available on all platforms. And we've had our other contributors review this vehicle. It's on our website, carcoachreports.com. Don't forget to follow us on all forms of social media at Lauren Fix, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time.